Hello YouTube, welcome back, Chris here. Today I want to talk to you about my commuter bike. Did a quick video on this a couple days ago and uh, really loving this bike. I'm having so much fun with it, just riding it to and from work. Kind of set this up to be my really quick knock around bike. I, I wanted a bike with just basic flat pedals. Might put toe clips on it at some point, but no, no clipless pedals. Kickstand, burly mount to uh, you know, haul the burly with. And you know, just basic rack for cargo and just something to kind of get around. Well, today I want to point out a few things that I look for when I am building a bike like this. And like this, by I mean a multi-speed kind of hybrid, easy uh, commuting bike. So first thing I look for when uh, when picking out a frame for this, and also keep in mind I'm going to point out attributes of the frame. Pretty much anything else in this bike can be changed pretty easily, but once you pick a frame, you're kind of settled into it. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's kind of important to make sure you're getting the right features on a frame when you, when you pick one that you're going to do a project like this with. First thing I like to look for, 700C wheels. I'm sure there's some people out there that have done really cool conversions and really cool commuter bikes out of 26 inch wheel or another wheel size. But for me, I'm six foot three, I'm a tall guy. I like to have a bigger wheel set. Just feels more natural and more efficient and uh, a little bit faster. So 700C wheels are a must for me. I stay away from anything old with 27s. I stay away from anything old mountain with 26. Have seen some really cool bikes made out of 26 inch rigid mountain bikes, but that's not really my style. So, and just keep in mind too, these are my opinions, my preferences for my bike. Um, everyone's got a different, uh, different goal they're looking for and, and a different set of uh, requirements for their bikes. The second point I always look for if I'm doing a bike like this, rigid fork. Um, for a commuter bike, you know, you're talking cargo, weight, abuse, maintenance free, rigid fork is just the best way to go. Um, especially when you're picking out like a cheaper hybrid bike like this, you know, uh, a suspension fork is going to be a coil spring basic fork, super heavy, you know, might, uh, lose its, uh, might lose its tension at some point and just become really dead. Um, and replacing a fork on a bike is... It is doable, but on this level bike, it's not very cost effective and, you know, it's, it's, it's really just something you want to kind of avoid if you can. So I always go for a rigid fork bike and it just makes everything easier there. The third thing I always look for is tire clearance. So this is a hybrid bike. Uh, I'm going to most likely do a uh, video here in the future of how to do like a single speed or fixie uh, conversion, how to pick out a good bike for that. But on a hybrid bike like this, you know, we're talking, you, you definitely want to have a little bit more tire clearance for uh, different tire options. So right now I'm running just a, a 700 by 35 tire on this. At some point in the future, I do plan on putting a larger tire on here. But you want to make sure in the back of the frame here, you got plenty of clearance on both sides of the tire. Down here by the bottom bracket, you want to have plenty of room here. I'm guessing I could probably go up to like a 40 or 42 on this bike before I start to get real close to the frame. And of course up here in the fork as well. The next thing I always like to look for in a bike like this is the brakes. Now this is a V-brake bike. Um, when I picked this up, it actually had cantilevers on it. It had a cantilever hanger right here in the front canties and it has a built-in cantilever hanger right here. I converted it over to short pull V brakes, um, just more braking power, easier to work. I, I like them better, but you know cantilevers work fine if you if you have patience with them and want to get them, you know, <laughs> and have the time to get them set up right. Uh, I would be okay with doing a disc brake bike as well. Um, now, if you're looking for just kind of cheaper bikes, you know, this bike was a couple hundred bucks when it started. Um, you're probably not going to find a disc brake in an older bike, but I would be okay with a disc brake. What I would try to avoid would be a U-brake, unless you're doing like a, like I said, a single speed or road specific commuter bike. Um, you're not going to get a lot of tire clearance out of a U-brake or a road brake. So something V-brake, cantilever, or disc. And uh, that's, that's typically what I go for. And I also like cantilevers because I usually just have parts laid around, simple to service, don't have to worry about bleeding or anything. And I don't need a ton of braking power on a bike like this. So that's, that's usually what I go for, but, but like I said, I would be okay with a disc as well. The next thing I look for is going to be a standard headset. Um, 
not 100% totally deal breaker material, but it makes for a lot less headache if you have an issue with the headset. This is just a standard press-in inch and eighth headset. Anything integrated can be tricky to find bearings and get the right bearings, especially in a quick time frame. But, you know, this is actually just the headset that came with the bike. It's nothing special, just this WTB Momentum older headset. But it was running smooth. You know, I put a little fresh grease on the surfaces, put it back together, and had no problems with it since. So we're just going to keep rolling with it because the whole point of this bike is to be just kind of cheap and basic. And with that headset, we'll also talk about the steerer tube. I typically want to go for a non-quill stem if possible. A lot of the cheaper hybrid bikes are going to have a quilled stem, where this is a standard uh, inch and eighth steerer tube and a normal uh, bolt-on stem. Um, by the way, I might as well mention this Thompson stem. This is off an old mountain bike of mine. It's non-oversized when they used to do the pinch bolt clamp. Pretty cool stem. But I just keep it around for projects like this. It's something I don't really use on my mountain bikes anymore because it's not oversized. So it's kind of out of out of touch with the modern standards. And I have this really cool sweat back bar. This is from my Karate Monkey, which is actually right over here. Uh, that's what it originally came with, this torsion bar by Nitto. And it's a steel sweat back bar. It goes great with this old Thompson stem. And I found that in a bin here. So I'm like, yeah, that's perfect for this bike. Uh, next point. Bottom brackets. This one is a deal breaker for me. For this kind of bike, I always avoid anything press in. I always avoid anything that's not an English thread. So standard threaded English bottom bracket. I don't care what kind of crank it has on it. As long as it's a standard threaded English bottom bracket, I can put whatever I want on there. But I, I had a bike in, in college. I made a fixie out of an old Peugeot. And oh my gosh, trying to find a French threaded bottom bracket was horrible. Uh, I don't recommend anything press fit, anything BB30, PF30, any of that stuff. It's just a headache. You know, when you're talking these kind of bikes, you're usually talking square taper cranks. You don't need anything other than a threaded, basic bottom bracket. So that is something I always look for in a bike like this. Also, in uh, talk with standards, seat post. I don't want anything integrated. Most of these bikes are just going to have a standard seat post, but nothing integrated, nothing proprietary, no funky shapes, just a simple round seat post. This is a 27.2 millimeter seat post, which is probably the most common standard out there, but really any standard round seat post is going to be fine and easy enough to source a new post for. Last but not least, rack and fender mounts. So I do have a rear rack on this bike. Um, I typically go rear rack over front rack. I know some people like the weight in the front better, but this is a, a rear rack. And then you got rack mounts down here and up top here. Also got fender mounts right there and down here. You know, and this is something you, in, in working on a project, you may or may not need or want. Just depends what your goals are for the bike. But you know, in the future, you think about it, you might haul more stuff, you might ride in worse conditions, and you might want those features in the future. So it's nice to have it. You know, it's something that's kind of hard to add later. So, you know, you might as well look for it when you're when you're getting the bike and kind of avoid that problem down the road. So that's about it for my Marin Mill Valley. Um, I probably will do a video in the future where I talk about picking out a single speed or a fixie. Uh, I have a, a bike here I can do that with. I just got to get some parts and kind of show you guys how it's done. Um, but this is a multi-speed bike, obviously, so it's going to have a standard dropout. If you are doing a single speed or fixie, you're going to want to look for a sliding dropout as opposed to that. But again, that's for another video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below in the comments, and we will see you next time.